was a man who thought he was Bangkok ready was Mike Platinum Perry stepping into the boxing ring 0 and 1 as a professional boxer but 5 and 0 in the bare knuckle boxing ring facing Jake the problem child Paul also known as El Gallo I'm not going to call him that outside of saying that's a dumbass nickname the should, rooster bro yeah you should never have that ever again El Gallo El Gallo yeah whatever bro um Fought Mike. Perry. We're just supposed to be Mike Tyson. Ends up fighting Mike Perry. We weren't really sure what this was going to be. You and I said like maybe Mike Perry can make it a fight if he can get into the later rounds. Has a good gas tank. Maybe he can withstand the shots. But it really just depends on how well he takes the power. Turns out not very well. He got dropped, floored in round one within the first two minutes. Got back up. Continue to fight on. Round two, same thing happened. I'll give credit to Mike. He did well in rounds three and four. I think most people had him winning rounds three and four. But then in round five, he got hurt again and just was not able to come back. Ends up being floored in round six. Tried to get up and fight on. The referee called it off. Jake Paul. Um, the problem child. Yeah, man. What do you what do you think? I mean, this is about... I mean, this is what we expected, right? Let's just be honest. Yeah. Let's put it out there. Yeah. He could have maybe ended it earlier. Didn't. But... I mean, it happened. Yeah. I mean, we, we knew Mike Perry wasn't a boxer. What do you mean Mike Perry's not a boxer? He fights in PKFC, motherfucker. I know. Yeah. Bare knuckle is so much different. People don't realize. But it's also different when you're fighting motherfuckers in your weight class, too. Yep. That, too. Um, and now, granted, Mike's fought some bigger guys like Luke Rockhold. But even then, it's like, dude, it's just a, di it's a different sport. You know? Yeah. You're able to make up that ground in bare knuckle, which is something he's really good at. He's not going to make up that ground I mean, in a boxing match coming in on short notice. I mean, you know, we'll play the Jake. I mean, it just there was nothing on the line. You know, that's I think that's a big thing right now. Jake for a while, like, and I and I like to some morning combat this morning. They kind of talked about it. Like, it felt like his whole fight career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his whole fighting career had, had kind of progressed pretty you know well. Like, yeah, kind of had the right idea. Up he... until Tommy Fury, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, and even then, it, I don't even think it was. Bad even that moment, yeah, because even hasn't even affected him. But after that, but but I'm saying he went from boxing influencer to boxing into a professional athlete, and a grand smaller, but a professional yeah. athlete. And then he went on to fight another influencer, but an influencer with experience and wins under his belt. And then I can't remember who was after Anderson Gibb. Do we have it pulled up? There? So so he fought. So you messed up a little bit there. So he fought Deji, then he fought Gibb, back to back influencers. Then he fought Nate Robinson. Then he fought the worst striker in MMA history, Ben, ben Askren. But he, he was, but he was an MMA guy. He, he was, was an MMA fighter. Champion. Exactly. And then he fought Ty former former UC champion Tyron Woodley, who had, you know. He had some power, but, you he know. He had some power, but, I mean, you know, fight 30 pounds lighter normally. It is wrestler by class, trade. Wrestler by trade. Beat him. Fought Anderson Silva. Greatest of all time. 49 years old. Out of his, you know. But... Just before that, had put up a great performance against Chavez Jr. and knocked out the ghost of Tito Ortiz. Um, Tito Ortiz, I say the ghost. Of, you mean the, I, you mean stopped. the former mayor of Huntington Beach? You're Tito right. Or? You're right. Tito Ortiz. You know, I said ghost. My bad, guys. He's actually still alive. He said he actually wants to outlive his kids. That's how long. <laughs> Crazy statement. <laughs> So, but up to that point, up to that point, he fights Tommy Fury, he loses. He's, but he's I also think, dropped every opponent up until that point, too. Correct. Including Tommy Fury. Including Tommy Fury, who he dropped to the jab in the last round. Um, I mean, and then after that, you know, after that, he kind of had two ways you can go, right? It's like, do I stay fighting kind of people around my size, my weight, my age, actual pro boxers, or do I fight MMA fighters? So then he beat Nate Diaz, who, you know, we know there, you know, former UC guy. Typically fights at 155, 170. Sure, they'll fight at Dog, pounds. great cardio. Yeah, they'll fight at 200 pounds, nope, but he did. Not much power. You know, went 10 rounds. Fought Andre August, one fight in seven years. Fought Ryan Borland, Ryan, one fight in six years. Knocked which, him Which both is the out. kind of the guys you see when you're building up your career correct, as a boxer correct. coming Cans, up. Cans, you know. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, they could beat my ass. Journeyman, journeyman. Journeyman's journey, more. Journeyman's better journey, than Journeyman's right? more proper term. But um, point being, and then he fought Mike Perry, who MMA fighter. Bare knuckle boxer, Close, short notice, younger. But I think this was one. This was for a lot of people. Um, I think the issue with Jake Screw yeah. now, or at least the Jake experiment or whatever, he needs to find direction again. Yeah, people are no longer like people are invested, but they're upset with him. But at the same time, I'm also like, when are you guys gonna understand? Because I saw you tweet back to me and me and Anderson. I saw her tweet about they're like, I don't get why it's like this. It's like me and I. I'm sorry, honey. I know you don't follow it like I do. Yeah, but. And, I don't, and you know, and, and she and she follows. And by the way, no disrespect to her. She yeah, she follows it. But you know, but but not. I feel like you know. But I mean, like, I know this guy. Yeah, I've been there since day one. Exactly. 
I know what his fucking plan is. And I really think Jake's plan in the end of all of this is still to just get like one or two big, like really big payday and dip out. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. He's, he's, he, he, that's why he's always hunting for these big names. That's why he's asking for Connor. Yeah, called, exactly. He, he called out Poets yeah. on now, who's the most you know most relevant MMA yeah. name right now. You know what yeah. I mean, he's taking on Mike Tyson, probably the most relevant name in boxing of all time. You know, I I've been very cautious of saying this, by the way, because I I know how good Jake Paul is. Like I've never really, I think I picked uh, Ben Askren to pick to beat him, is just because I was like I have no fucking idea that I I know I've picked him every time since then, except for Tommy Fury. Mm-hmm. And even then, he could have. He almost got the nod on that one. He almost, he, which would have been horrific. He got easily outboxed two fucking six rounds out of eight. But you get my point here, mm-hmm. dude. I think Poetan would beat the fucking piss out of you. Would you would think so? You would think so. I would I, think so. Like I, I'd probably pick Poetan to do that. I would, uh, dude. I mean, I would probably. I would. I mean, he's an actual bad motherfucker. No mm-hmm. offense to these guys that Jake's beaten. because a lot of them are bad motherfuckers. But dude, to go, I think even Jake would be surprised. Because he's never been hit by a fucking an actual cruiserweight, let alone a heavyweight, which is what Poetan. Someone can leverage power like that. Exactly. He's. Yeah. I mean, he was the heaviest hitter he fought. If you look at his career, probably Woodley. Probably Woodley. Yeah, but I mean, then he's got he's got dangerous power for one seventy, mm-hmm. and they fought at two hundred pounds. That's what I'm saying. So it's like that's what I'm saying. It was yeah. Probably so Woodley. I think I think hey, Jake. but Jake's stuff hey. his opponent's still the day. Hear me out. Deji attitude. <laughs> hey, hey, Deji, Deji. Did win around. He busted up the nose. You know he did. Have here's me. Here, here's what I want to see. Okay, if there's one fight I want to see for Jake Paul, it's not Mike Tyson. It's not Alex Bahia. It's not Conor McGregor. I mean, fuck, dude. How much, dude? I, you know, I felt actually, I felt inspired by watching Jake Paul's recent fight. I went up and beat up, beat up some fourth graders who were <laughs> half my size. You know, I felt, I felt really. I was like, oh man, if Jake can beat up guys who weigh sixty pounds less than him. I can do that too. You know, uh, sixty pounds exaggerating. You know, but you get my point. I mean, it'd be 60 pounds for the Connor fight if they fought. But hear me out. He digress. If Jake Paul wants to fight somebody, there's a man who's 0-2. He's a former UFC champion. He's a heavyweight. Francis Ngannou, come on down. I don't... Hey, hey, if Jake wants to fight heavyweights. See, I actually... If he wants to fight heavyweights. No, no, I, I just hear saying. you. I hear you, but you know something? I recently reinvented the Francis Ngannou timeline. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, go ahead. He fights Wilder. He wins. Okay. He's he's back. Then he takes on Fury. Okay. Close. Controversial. Ria gets it. And then, bam, whoever's the champion at the time he gets. That's, I mean. An I, official fight. I think that's how he rebuilds. It's possible. Now. He'd have uh, to win all those fights. This is actually something I, I forgot to put in the, the section. But we'll, we're already on in Ghana, so we'll just stay real quickly. He's supposed to be fighting November 19th in Saudi Arabia against Henry Ferreira, which will kind of push back your timeline a little bit. But hey, let's say let's say he does not go that route. Let's say he does not fight Wilder. I'm just saying, man, Jake Paul, you want to fight a heavyweight, brother? I got a six foot three man out of Cameroon who weighs two sixty for you. That's all I'm saying. Say, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. It would add in because you know he's gonna beat a a fucking you know senior citizen in Mike Tyson, and Mike used to train for and Big Fran. I'm just saying, man, it would make it work. You know. Jokes aside, um. The most realistic fight next for Jake. It's Nate. You think Nate? Is that what you just said? Nate or Jorge. Nate or Jorge? Yeah. So, on the prelims of this fight, we had Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. defeating Uriah Hall. That or him. I think I think the Mike Tyson fight genuinely may not happen. Um, I, I just think, dude, Mike's 58 and had a health, a me, literally a medical emergency like <laughs> a month ago. Like, what are we doing? Like, how, how shameless are you? So,